Hello and welcome back everyone. It's been a long winter break, but I have a couple of huge new projects planned. I hope you are as excited as I am and we're starting with the Bottoms Get Beat Up Inarizaki edition. First edition was Nekoma, now we're moving on to Inarizaki and the ships are Sakuatsu, Asasuna, Arankita and Komoaka. I hope you're excited. Let's go. We could stop by the Onijirimiya on our way back. Sure, I won't complain about free food. Atsuma grinned as he adjusted the strip of his backpack. Kida let a small smile tuck his lips upward. He was proud of his old teammates. They had all done very well for themselves. The fact alone that he was currently accompanied by three professional volleyball players showed that. He still watched every game he managed to catch of them, though they didn't know that. Today was a lucky coincidence of all of them being in the same city, so they decided to meet up. Kida had a free day and so did Atsumu, who for part of the off-season stayed with his brother and Suna. Akagi's practice was cut short this morning due to an inspection of the gym, and so a small window of opportunity opened for them to meet again after so long. How is Aaron, by the way? I didn't see him since the last game we played against each other. You mean the last game MSBY lost against him? Shut up! We could kick your asses any day. We'll see about that. Kida chuckled at the childish bickering between the two. Some things never changed. He was sure it would get even worse once they arrived at the restaurant and Osamu would chime in as well. So, how is he? And how's the farm going? Both are good. Well, Aaron injured his foot a little and needs to rest. That's why he couldn't accompany me today, but the doctor said it's nothing major. Gods, that kind of injuries suck. I can imagine you'd struggle to sit still. Hey, it's not just me. Should have seen Ami when he had to rest his shoulder for real. He was such a baby about it. Sounds like the two of you are perfect for each other. You too, Akagi? What is it, Bully Atsumu Day? They laughed, but Suna patted him conciliatory on the back, and Kida shook his head in faint disbelief. Nah, but you gotta admit, you make a bit... Atsume? As in that jerk Mia Atsume? A guy who had been chatting with his friends not too far from them overheard and suddenly intervened. Atsume's eyes narrowed. His face looked familiar, but he couldn't quite place it. Suna next to him tensed, while Akagi and Kida looked mainly confused and surprised by the sudden interaction. That would be me. Maybe you say what you want to tell me straight to my face. I don't think there's a reason to argue. I'm sure this is a misunderstanding. Kida, as usual, tried to keep the peace and offer the idiot an easy way out. A second chance to handle this like adults, but of course, he didn't take it. Gladly. You're a fucking... Nobody believes your little boyfriend act with that germaphobe. And if he does, he's naive and brain dead. You probably cheated on him multiple times already. Whoa, now hold on. What the fuck, dude? You better think twice about what you say next. A dark shadow had settled over Suna's face, and this time Kida could very well sympathize. He was still recovering from the shock of the sudden encounter when the guy already continued. From the corner of his eye he could see Atsumu digging his nails into his palms, but he hid them quickly in his pockets. Oh, what's this? Your new boy toys? 
One at a time isn't even enough for you, huh? Holy f Shut up! What is your effing problem? My problem is that that slept with my girlfriend. Suddenly, recognition flashed up in Atsumu's eyes, and a grin spread on his face. Kida sighed internally. He knew that expression, mocking and teasing, simply a mask for Atsumu to hide his anger behind and make his opponent even more irritated. Oh, I remember you, now that you say it. I also remember Yuma-chan running for the hills from you. By the time she ended up with me, she hadn't been your girlfriend for a while. I was about to win her back, but you turned her against me. She only started dating you because she pitied you, and she immediately regretted it when it turned out that you were an outright creep. I can see why now. Kida knew that there was a time between Atsumu starting to play professionally and him dating Sakusa, in which the Seda earned himself quite the playboy image. He saw nothing wrong with that, but even then and despite Atsumu's attitude, he often questioned the validity of that portrayal. It was good publicity, but he doubted it was accurate. Yuma, however, he remembered. She was a sweet woman. Atsumu had met her at the gym, where she trained to become stronger. The woman was a force to be reckoned with in martial arts, which she practiced semi-professionally. No one who saw her in the ring for the first time would guess what a kind-hearted nature lay beneath. In utter irony, her biggest weakness was a lack of enforcing her own boundaries. Hence, she ended up in this situation. She also wasn't very violent, as most weren't who practiced martial arts to this degree, because they were well aware of their own strength. In truth, both Atsumu as well as the idiot would have a hard time facing her in a fight and making it out with minor injuries. Winning was hardly even on the table. But other than her ex, Atsumu wasn't just aware of that, but admired it. He, however, was plain ignorant toward it or he wouldn't be so persistent. Shut up. If she slept with you, the isn't even worth my time anymore. Atsumu's eyes darkened, and Kida too could feel a distinct discomfort bordering on anger rising inside him. Nonetheless, the Seda's grin didn't falter. Oh? Then what the fuss about? Obviously, there is no reason to argue then. For a moment, Kido was surprised, almost shocked, that Atsumu had taken such an amicable way out. With no offense to the setter, but this seemed, even now, too mature for him. Then... I mean, she is way better off without you. And you can continue to be a pathetic little jerk. It's much more convincing now that she isn't there to make you look better. Really, if your goal is to appear as creepy and miserable as possible, you are doing exceptionally well for yourself. There it was. Though, while it wasn't the approach he favored, Kida couldn't say he disagreed with Atsumu's choice. This guy had definitely crossed the line. He didn't get to enjoy Atsumu's talent for witty retorts for long though, when suddenly, without so much as a warning, the guy hit. He really wished Yuma could have been here right now, but instead, he was left stabilizing a stumbling Atsumu while Suna, having reached his limits, stomped toward the attacker. He had never seen the middle blocker so furious before. It made him falter for a second and stare at him as he aimed to punch back. However, when he turned his attention back to Atsumu, he understood why. Or at the very least, he felt the same. The blonde was frozen in shock. His response was nothing like what Kida had expected. Instead of anger or aggression, he was faced with horror. The Seda didn't jump at the opportunity to defend himself and punch back. He looked like he had barely comprehended what happened and his knees seemed to grow weak. Atsumu? The blonde flinched and his eyes hectically zeroed in on Kida, who found himself feeling as though he tried soothing an injured animal. Puzzled, he looked at him, not prepared for this kind of response. Yet, he wasn't given much time to think about it. 
Yuma's ex hadn't been alone and his friends had realized the fight breaking out and instead of putting their buddy on a leash, who was way out of line, they eagerly joined the fight, giving Suna a hard time, who luckily got supported by Akagi as well. Kida hated violence, but he would be a damn bad captain if he wouldn't have his teammates back. Seeing that Atsumu, for an unknown reason, still seemed petrified and in no condition to fight, he placed himself between him and the first person targeting them. He quickly and without warning delivered a punch to the throat, causing them to stumble back and gasp for air. He had to think fast. The quicker they managed to resolve this, the better. He tried analyzing the situation quickly and taking as much information as possible. The guy's friend group wasn't much larger than theirs, six in total, but two stood to the side laughing and unbothering to get involved aside from throwing in a comment or two. In numbers, they were equal. However, Atsumu seemed out of it, while the guy he punched already regained composure. With an angry groan that sounded odd through his injured throat, he stormed toward him, seemingly neither prepared nor with a plan in mind. Kida easily stepped aside at the last minute and used his own charge to make him stumble. He was about to secure him when he was distracted by movement from the corner of his eye. Osuna was focused on the guy who had punched and insulted Atsumu, two of his buddies had singled out Akagi, probably because he was the smallest, and although he did well holding his own in the fight, two against one simply wasn't fair. It distracted Kida long enough for the guy he had been fighting to overcome his confusion, latch onto his clothes and push him into the ground. He swung his fist and Kida just had enough time to turn his head and avoid getting punched in the eye. A hellish pain spread from his temple and he gritted his teeth. He expected the next punch to follow suit and fought hard against the sudden dizziness overtaking him and regain control. But before he could land another hit, someone intervened. Atsumu had snapped out of his stupor, though his eyes were still blown wide and his hands trembling. He had caught the man's wrist and slowly began twisting it until the other yelped in pain and weakly fought against his grip. Get away from him. He couldn't hide the fear in his voice, but it was overshadowed by fury and the guy actually let go of him, visibly scared for his wrist. Kida tried to focus his eyes on the two, but his sight got in and out of focus. He had hit him right where it hurt and it caused his head to spin. The world blurred out and he noticed little of the rest of the fight, only that at some point Atsumu wasn't torn between engaging and keeping him down anymore and slowly put his attention on his former captain. It was over. He couldn't tell if it won or not, but it was finally over. Akagi next to him gasped for air holding his sides. His face was twisted in pain but he kept up strong and even forced to grin as their eyes met. Well. What now? The Onigiri Mio? Atsumu nodded slowly. Maybe it was just the head injury, but he seemed pretty out of it again. Kida, his side slowly clearing, could see Suna throwing unsure, worried glances at the blonde, and immediately he tried to determine what was wrong with him. He couldn't see an obvious injury aside from some bruises blossoming on his skin, the most prominent on his cheek, but that only made his concern grow. Akagi, despite his own injuries, helped him up, and they walked arm in arm, led by Suna, who was the only one seemingly aware of where they were going. How are you feeling? Dizzy. Hmm, I bet you got hit in the head pretty hard. Yeah, I'm afraid none of us are looking too well. Suna let his gaze wander over the group, lingering at Kida. I'll call Aaron to pick you up. Good idea. He didn't think he could make it home like this, not before getting a good night's sleep. 
What about you, Akagi? Nah, I'll be fine. It's not that bad. He visibly flinched every time he made a wrong movement, but to his credit, he could walk fairly well, and with only minimal winds of pain. Suna looked at him skeptically, but ultimately nodded. They reached the entrance to the restaurant with effort and a lot of pain groans, but they reached it nonetheless. Time to face the consequences. Thank you so so much for watching to the end, I know this has been a very long break. Please like and subscribe so that I can get back into the algorithm if you like this video and if you don't want to miss out on any future content. Now, as always, please tell me your favorite quote under the pinned comment and even more importantly, which ship are you most excited for for this new series? Also, I mentioned at the beginning that I had quite some plans and obviously there are some series we still need to continue and wrap up, so tell me and the comments which one you're most excited for and I will put up a poll on the community tab soon so you can vote on what you want to see next on this channel now that we're back. Now I hope you have a wonderful and amazing day. Step one, wake up early gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day Wake up, today's gonna be